The number one comment that I've received over the past week has been asking me, why did I go with the 16-inch MacBook Pro and not the 14 for software development? Well, today we're gonna to take a look at my workflow to understand why. Hey, my name is Bob, and I build backend services and mobile apps. I've been doing it for a little over a decade, and I absolutely love it. The portability of a laptop is what does it for me. I can program from just about anywhere, and these new MacBook Pros really do feel like workstation-grade desktops built into a laptop form factor. So, you're trying to decide which size to go with. Let's take a look at my workflow. Software design. It is the epitome of what I do. I obsess over software design and have my entire career. When someone asks me to build something, the last thing I think about is the user interface. I prescribe to something known as bottom-up software design. The goal being, I see my target way off in the distance and I layer and build software solutions starting from the ground up. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna bring up unit tests. You're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck is this guy doing talking about 14 inch, 16 inch and unit tests? I promise you, there is a point. As I carefully construct software from bottom up, I love writing tests while I do it. And I do that with behaviors. I capture those and I write those down as requirements in unit tests. And the thing that I do is I love having two coding panes open on my screen at any given time. One side is tests, one side is implementation code. Now you can pull off side-by-side -side coding windows on a 14-inch MacBook Pro, but it does require changing the display size. So for the past two years, I've been using a 13-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro, and I do the same workflow on both of them. And I found that over time, the 13 is really starting to hurt my neck and my eyesight. I'm at the computer for 10 hours a day. I might be moving the computer for maybe an hour or two. So to me, the most important thing is ergonomics, how I sit at the laptop, how far is the distance of the laptop from my eyes. Over time, if your resolution is out of whack and you have to lean forward to see what you're actually trying to do, you will find that you'll start incurring neck pain and eye stress, and that's just not anything that you can sustain over a long period of time, especially if you're gonna do this professionally. Trackpad gestures are great. You can swipe from one desktop to the next, but for me, moving using the mouse is inefficient. I prefer IDE shortcuts. I really like just using my keyboard to do absolutely everything while I'm coding. So there are IDE shortcuts out there that can take you from one window to the next and you know, if you only have one coding window open, move you from one to one that you worked on recently. That works out great, but to me, I don't like the context switching. I really am the fastest when I have both pieces of information right there side by side. So that's my workflow and that's why the 16 made sense for me. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the 14 inch. I just chose the 16 inch because that's what I need ergonomically. If you are considering the 14 inch, but are still a little bit on the fence, go to an Apple store, pull one up in front of you, change the display scaling sizes, so that way you can see just how much information you can get on the screen. Take two Chrome tabs, put them next to each other, and see how much information you actually see. It's one of those kinds of things where you don't really know until you see it in front of you live, but I just knew after seeing and working with the 13 inch and 16 inch that I needed the 16 inch to be the most performant version of myself. Here's some reasons why I would consider a 14 inch for my own personal workflow. The first one is classroom. If I'm gonna be in a classroom most of the time at one of those tiny desks, then I most certainly would go with the 14 inch or even the MacBook Air. The second reason, if I was cycling to work like I did every day before the pandemic, then I probably would consider the 14 inch because it is more compact and it is easier to carry. And lastly, I would totally consider the 14 inch if I wasn't doing that specific workflow. If I'm not actually putting two coding windows up next to each other and coding that way every day all the time, then yeah, the 14 would be perfect. 
These new MacBook Pros are awesome. Whether or not you go with the 16 inch or the 14 inch, you're gonna get a lot of power in a portable form. Just consider, you can always get a docking station if you wanna plug in and get a little bit more resolution out of them with an external monitor. One word of advice I will give you after you place your order, if you do end up ordering, is that you will feel like you made the wrong decision. Should I have gone with the 14? Should I have gone with the 16? Silver or space gray? Guys, it's, it's not that confusing. Take a look at your workflow. Really think about what you need ergonomically. Portability is important, but it's not as important as your personal well-being. It's something you sit at for many hours a day. And then pick the color that you want, not the one that you think everyone else thinks you want. Like, go with the color that you want. That's definitely the decision process that I went through, and I'm really happy with what I did. The previous generation MacBook Pros were awesome devices, but they weren't great laptops. They got a little bit too hot in the lap, and the battery performance just wasn't all that great. The new MacBook Pros, the ones with the ARM-based architecture, they're awesome. The battery life is great, and they have exceptional heat management. I'm excited for you to just get back to coding, and I'm really excited about everyone writing unit tests. Like if this was helpful, and subscribe if you want to watch more. Thanks guys.